Hey, hi everyone. Um, it's already two thirty, so I think we should get started. Hey, um, so thank you again for attending this session. Um, so this session I we have Sean uh, back with us again on and now talking about advanced performance management. But then before I hand the time over to Sean, I'd like to take you through some of the changes we are making to Georgia Professional next year for all the ASEAN ANZ students. Right, so for your September exam, then strategic professional is still paper-based with the exception of Australia, because in Australia, we are having remote exams. So you can see that all the changes made to strategic professional exam delivery only starts next year in 2021. And that starts in Singapore, followed by uh, Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, New Zealand, Thailand, and Vietnam in June 2021. And in September 2021, we got Brunei, Myanmar, and Philippines. So what does that mean for you as a student? So for your current exam sitting, don't worry, it is still paper-based. So therefore, focus on your preparation for the exam okay? and know how to maximize your time in the exam environment. Now, then post your September 2020 exam, depending on when the, the exam will be moving to computer-based, you need to think about how to prepare yourself using the practice platform that ACCA has for strategic professional exam. Because once you move into computer-based exam, then the paper-based will not be offered. So this is unlike applied skills. So in applied skills, when we roll out computer-based exam, we have, we have paper-based exams running in parallel to computer-based. However, for strategic professional, we will move straight into computer-based exam and do away with paper-based totally when computer-based happens. So I hope that's clear to all of you. And for today, it is just to give you a very quick overview of the resources available should you need to practice, um, you know, on, on a computer-based environment. So again, I need to stress to you that unless you're from Australia, you should focus on this practice only after your exam. Okay, so in the ACCA support page, okay, um, which you're familiar with, there is a lot, a lot of um, support that we're providing to the student. At the same time, if you scroll down the page a little under, under learning and revision, there is a whole section on CBE preparation. Okay, so let me show you the first one. Okay. On the first one, uh, CB preparation, there's a series of four videos which help you, if, if, and each video is about four minutes each, and that actually gives you a very quick overview and tip okay, in terms of what you need to do when you get to the exam room, uh, what you should be doing when the exam starts, how to plan your answers, and how to complete your answers. So after your September exam is over, I do encourage you to have a quick look at this video and familiarize yourself with the exam platform okay, um, so that you don't need to panic when you know, your exam becomes computer-based in 2021. Now, at the same time, we have also a video on YouTube that talks about how to manage your SPCB workspace effectively. So this is really talking about how do you move your, the exhibits in the workspace, how should you set up you know, uh, your answers and so on. So again, look at this, post your exam session. Now, this is really hot from the press. I only received this yesterday, okay, where this is a, a very good one pager to showcase to you the various resources we have on SPCBE. Okay, so have a look at this okay, after your exam session is over. Now, then this is a series of webinars for those countries where we are currently running computer-based exam. Okay? Um, you can go in and register now, but, you can, but then look at it again post your exam session. So focus on preparing your exam currently. Okay, so that's all I've got. So this is really just to highlight to you the resources available and then the launch time 
for SPCB next year. So now I'll hand over the time to Sean. Hi, everybody. I hope you're well. Um, can you hear me okay, everybody? Let me know. I will just put my chat box on, but let me know if you can't hear me, if you want to talk to me. I think the best way to talk to me is, is via the chat box. Um, so there's a Zoom webinar chat. Uh, if you haven't been on one of these before, that's the best way to let me know. So maybe just let me know that you, yes, can hear. Thank you, Esther. Nanda, uh, hi. Uh, Vincent, hi. Maya, hi. Fantastic. Thanks for the interaction. Nicole, how are you? Um, good to meet you. So just to introduce the uh, basis of this session, it's um, a session for people who are either going to study APM or are just starting to study APM. And the key aim is that you're successful in APM. That's the whole point. Um, a little bit about my background. Um, my name's Sean Purcell, and I'm here to make sure you're su super successful in APM. Uh, a in terms of me, I've been uh, teaching in this area for over 25 years, and I've been working with the ACCA in related areas on various training programs also for over 25 years. Um, and uh, I'm a founding member of the organization, which is now Kaplan in the UK. Uh, what else? I'm currently the UK, uh, voted the UK Lecturer of the Year, and I've uh, been nominated runner-up for that a couple of times. So basically, I'm, you know, you're in safe hands. And what I am going to say to you, I'm saying because I, I want you to pass this exam. I'm actually on vacation at the moment in France, and I've given up my holiday to try and help you pass. So my heart is in the right place. I'm not just giving you a webinar. I really want you to pass this exam. And um, the aim of this session is to make sure you're aware of everything that you need to be successful in your APM paper. And we're gonna go through a few things. Um, I've been to Asia, again, more times than I can remember. I know this has been run out of Malaysia and I've been coming to Malaysia over, since the mid nineties. I remember Malaysia when transport was uh, Bas Mini like this. And uh, the only shopping center was lot 10. Uh, so, you, you know, I've been coming, I also set the first tuition, one of the first tuition colleges on Jalan Pudu, no longer there, but um, yeah, there was no Patronas Towers. And yeah, so I've got a lot of understanding and empathy with your region. I've also been uh, doing some work. I might have met uh, people in Myanmar, um, in Singapore. Um, I know some people from Brunei. So yeah, um, if you've got any questions, I am more than happy for you just to interject. You don't need to wait until the end. And uh, I've got my chat panel open. Just so I've only got one panel open, don't put it in the Q&A box, put it in the Zoom box. That would be fantastic. Uh, and that's, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so that is how we are uh, going to uh, continue with this session. If I just move on to what we're going to look at in terms of the session structure, um, I'm going to give you an overview of what APM is about, the essence of it, so you understand. I'm going to look at the key resources which you need to use uh, so you can be successful. There's lots of great resources. A bit about the exam format and style. And then the key capabilities, really, that you need to demonstrate to do well in APM. And then talk about what you need to do before starting the course. So in terms of what are we going to look at let me just click on firstly let's have a look at the linkage of sbl uh sorry apm to other papers sorry i've just been talking about sbl to esther um, i've got a little beeping noise in my ear i think that's okay but for everyone else maybe it's just in my ear everyone can still hear me um so i think so just let me, just someone say yes to me. 
Yes, okay, thank you, Vincent. I just had a little beeping. I'm just, just making sure we all get in the best service we can. So in terms of what's happening, well, some of you might have studied management accounting. Um, yep, and in terms of management accounting, uh, you evaluated, uh, you know, or you were evaluated on your ability to demonstrate knowledge of management accounting techniques. Then at the applied skills level, um, performance management it still evaluated your competencies, but there were some techniques which started to require you to use some application. Well, at the uh, advanced performance management level, uh, it takes it a step further again. Yeah. And uh, you have to be obviously aware of the numbers, but you have to, um, you know, apply these numbers to a much greater extent than you would have before. So it's a much more applied exam. Uh, in terms of what would you be carrying from performance management? Well, I've got a brief summary of the things that you would be carrying. Um, so if we're looking at the area of costing, uh, obviously, activity-based costing, uh, that feeds into activity-based management, which is part of the APM syllabus. And um, yeah, you, you, you know, there have been some activity-based management questions in APM, which have required candidates to perform calculations. Uh, so yeah, it's important to have a knowledge of that area. The other specialist cost of management and accounting techniques um, in the uh, performance management syllabus, which are relevant, would be target costing, would be life cycle costing uh, as well. And um, yeah, they, they're there in the syllabus. So just you know, don't ignore these things. Uh, you should show some awareness of them. In terms of budgeting, well, uh, budgeting and variance analysis, they're important areas. And in APM, the focus is on whether the budget uh, is a useful tool or not. And maybe what type of budget is useful in what situation. Yep. So be f familiar with the different uh, budgeting sections uh, there, and um, you know things like standard costing, variance analysis. They're core management accounting tools, so you need to be able to be aware of them. But you should be able to discuss whether they're useful in a specific scenario and whether they provide the appropriate kind of information for management. Um, in terms of decision making from APM, well, it sometimes gets examined. Um, you might be asked to evaluate a decision, so you might have to do some calculations. So be familiar with, you know, uh, break even and, um, you know, can you calculate a break even? It's, it's unlikely that you'd be required to draw any charts there. Uh, but yeah, so appreciate that. In terms of risk and uncertainty, what would we need to know in the world of risk and uncertainty? Well, it's an important factor in control. Uh, so they will flow through into APM as well. Uh, so you should appreciate things like expected value, maxi min, um, mini max, um, sorry, maxi min, maxi max, mini max regret. You're probably not going to have to produce a decision tree, but you know you should appreciate the underlying principles of probability and joint probability. So just you know, it's, it's showing an awareness of things from a performance uh, measurement and control perspective. Well, um, that again was introduced in a APM, um, and um, yeah, that would also be considered uh, material that could feed through. Uh, they're, they're taken a little bit further at APM and there's some new techniques introduced such as value-based management and economic value added, performance pyramid and corporate failure. So that's, that's fairly new, I think. In, in essence, um, the APM exam is a strategic professional exam. Yep. And what that means is you as a student would be expected to demonstrate skills that you would be demonstrating when working in a professional environment, maybe as a consultant, maybe as an advisor. Yep. And so that's much more than what's required at performance management level. Yep. Uh, in performance management, you're required to be able to apply techniques to short scenarios. Uh, you know, you might be asked to calculate material mix and yield for a month. Um, yep. Whereas in APM questions, particularly in section A, 
you're going to have to deal with much longer scenarios and the examiner is looking if you can apply your knowledge to real life like situations. Yep, uh, you're going to have to deal with a larger amount of data and also be able to prioritize what's the most important issue. Essentially, can you see the big picture when you're presented with lots of detail? Yep, and also one question in APM might focus on several parts of the syllabus. Yep, so you can't just view each topic in, in a separate box. You have to appreciate the linkages and that's much more um, as it is in real life. So in, in conclusion, APM, it builds on knowledge covered in PM and there are areas that you should know well before starting APM, but there are higher level skills tested as in all strategic professional papers. Yep, and it's much more about application of your knowledge to lifelike scenarios. Um, so I think to help, what I would suggest is, you know, try and read around uh, the subject a little bit, practice past exam questions, and try when you see something in the business press to try to understand well, why they're doing that. What's the APM uh, take on that decision? So just to summarize, it's more advisory and um, adding value to technical, to, to technical information rather than just doing the technical information. Um, yes, it's uh, going to be more applied as the technical information is going to be more tested at PM level. And I think you will be expected to have a more holistic, broader view of things. So they're the key things that we need to know. Just to back that up, there's something here from the examining team. It talks about what I've just said, really, but this is the examining team's words. Uh, APM builds on PM knowledge by applying it in more complex scenarios. You need uh, to create information from lots of data given in the scenario and all that information then from which you need to add value with comments that are relevant and you don't just give a machine gun of comments. Um, okay. Alrighty. Um, what resources am I going to use? Well, lots, 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 lots. Um, the first thing um, you're going to look at would be the, um, well, you should look at all the fantastic resources that are available on the ACCA website. Yep, it, the, you know, it's really important that you use ACCA approved materials. Yep, and uh, if you're using physical books, uh, well, in terms of physical books, I would suggest that you only use, and you can check this out on the ACCA website, um, and, and they really, at the moment, are only those books from uh, BPP and Kaplan. You, you, and if you're going on any courses, please check on the ACCA website who are the approved course providers. If you're going to go on anyone else's course, I wouldn't, okay, because they're not being approved by the ACCA. People are unlikely, uh, or those courses are unlikely to cover everything you need. So please believe me on that. Don't waste your time on courses that haven't been approved by the ACCA. The ACCA approved them for you. Yep, so that's really important. Um, so a lot of the stuff is going to be in your study support guide. Uh, the other thing to think about when studying uh, you don't have to learn everything in your study materials parrot fashion. Yeah. So simply repeating what you've seen in your study materials in an exam is not really what the examiner wants. Yeah. So what I would recommend that you do is you read the materials, you understand, you appreciate the issues, and then you have a little think about them. Yep. And then you practice exam questions dealing with these areas. And that's going to help you develop the skills of critical analysis and you're going to need those both in the exam and you're going to need them in your professional work so that's that's important um, again please if you have any questions just jump in just jump in and, and ask me but you know this is just an introduction I don't really want to get into the technical minutiae of things but you know if you've got a particular question that's fine it's also really important to make sure you stay on the, uh, the examiner's side. So the examiner approach article is important. Uh, 
You also should have a look at the great stuff published on reading the requirements for APM, how as a student we can improve our APM answer. You might not be aware because there's so much great resource out there uh, that these things are all available on the ACCA website. There's some fantastic things on there that you must make sure you get on board with. There's a great article applying if you're studying other professional papers as well. You know, how are professional exams different? How do they differ? Make sure you're fully up to speed with that. Uh, at the professional level, we've got professional marks. There's an article on how to earn professional marks. So, you know, these are all things that you can go away and look at for homework. If you haven't done the ethics and professional skills module, it's really important that you do this. I would suggest before doing strategic professional papers, I wouldn't be leaving this till the very end because it helps develop a mindset for you that puts you in the right place needed to succeed in the strategic professional exams. Uh, obviously, all the great Q&As that are on the ACCA website. The other thing to look at, I, I know that the uh, ACCA don't publish exams in March, June, September and December, but the examiner reports are produced in March, June, September and December. And you can see the kind of questions that come up because the examiner report summarizes them. The examiner report also talks about why students didn't do very well. Yeah, and also if there's you know, requirement changes, have a look at the article on that as well. But you will find all of those on the ACCA website under the area of um, APM. You should also appreciate what's going on in the world of big data. This is having a big impact on how we manage performance in companies. There's a great article written on it. How does IT affect it? There's two articles on this, so have a look at both those articles. And also, it's about you getting over 50% in the exam. And to do that, it's important to understand what a marker is looking at. So, you know, read the mind of a marker article. Okay, so I'm, I'm really stressing those. You've got to have a look at them. They're all there on a plate for you. And, um, you, you know, doing a, quite a lot of work with the ACCA, I can look into all the data. I know how many people are taking exams. And then I know how many people who are logged onto the ACCA website and are taking the exam have actually looked at those articles. And, well, let me put it this way. It's definitely not all the students. And I, I just think, gosh, what a missed opportunity. Your ability to perform better in an exam is definitely going to be aided by going through all those resources I've said you should look at. Yeah, and, the, and you know, I see students spending time on unofficial dodgy websites where you've got these people who basically run courses around which they sell advertising saying, oh, do this, do that, do that. You're wasting your time, gang. Official ACCA um, material, official ACCA tuition providers, uh, if, you know, and if you're not doing that, well, you, you know, you're wasting your time. Um, spend time on things that the ACCA spend a lot of time evaluating as to whether they're good or bad. Okay, so that's really important. It, it, it might seem that, oh, I'm going to look at this website. If it's not an official ACCA one and you can find all of that information on the ACCA website, please stay away. Please stay away. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, I'll keep an eye on the webinar chat box. Let's have a little look at the exam format and style then and on what you're going to see. Well, you're going to see the fact that it's a three hour, 15 minute exam. You've got 115 minutes to do that. Uh, section A contains half of the marks, 46 of them for technical content and four for professional marks. Um, so not as many as, say, SBL, where you get 20 professional skills marks, but still four out of 50. Um, and then section B, there's no choice. There's two compulsory questions, 25 marks each. And um, one of those questions will be from uh, syllabus area A. The other one will be from the whole syllabus. And all you need is to get 50 marks to pass. And I'm going to run a, another session on APM where I go into the real detail of how to perform in an exam and what you need to do to get those 50 marks 
here, I'm just giving you the foundations, the overview of where your brain needs to be in terms of success in APM. But um, the next session is much more of an exam focused revision session. And we'll talk about the fact um, that how you get 50. And just remember all that we need to do is show that we understand the technical things, but it's really important that we are able to apply them. Okay, so that is in essence the exam. That is the syllabus, that's what it covers. What I'd like to talk about next are the capabilities that you need to do well on the APA exam. But just before, does anyone have any questions on what I've just said so far? The beauty of you being on live is we can chat and uh, I, I can yeah, deal with any minor niggles you may have. Um, yep, uh, I've got uh, Siswin. Uh, hi, Sean. Passion rates for APM have been below 40 for the past few sessions. What would you say is the main reason for the students failing? Um, the main reason uh, for that is that um, students tend to not, uh, they, they tend to answer questions like robots and they just give all of the financial information without contextualizing whether that information is relevant or not. And um, APM is a strategic professional level skill. And it's one where you, you can say, well, you know, that's the budget. But in, the, in this dynamic business, in this scenario, that kind of budgeting approach is inappropriate or it's not very useful. So it's more than just knowing the technical aspect. It's knowing the appropriateness of that technical aspect in the context of the scenario. Yeah, that's, that's the issue there. Um, uh, we have said, can I know why it's no examiner report for July 20 and where can we get it? Uh, that might be because that was a very limited exam in July, but there's an examiner report. I'm not sure what the policy is on that July 20 report, we, if I'm really honest, but I, I didn't mention July. I mentioned there's one for every year, March, June, September and December. Uh, July was a special case because there's only a very, very small number of students who actually took APM. I mean, most uh, exam centres were closed because of COVID-19. Um, so um, I'm not sure about answering that question. Maybe Esther might be able to help on that. Um, how, mu how much time, uh, Jin, do I allocate for Section A and Section B? Well, it's 195 minutes. We're probably going to be spending... Um, uh, 15 minutes just getting familiar, so that's 180 minutes. I would say we've then probably got 30 minutes reading and planning. So I, I would have a budget and I'd be thinking of about one and a half minutes a mark. So if a question's 10 marks, that's 15 minutes. But also I'd keep a, an ongoing track of time. Again, I'm going to go into some detail on those practical ways in which we deal with things in the revision session. But yeah, thank you for your question, Jin. Um, uh, uh, Mian says, what do I do first, A, B, or C? I think if you're practicing exams, you would, um, there, isn't a, there isn't a C either, there's section A and there's section B, which is two questions. Which do you do first? Well, hopefully you would have practiced quite a few exam questions before the actual real exam, and you would have decided which one you feel more comfortable in doing first, either section A or section B. But there's no real... If you're managing your time, it shouldn't really, um, wouldn't be possible. Thank you, Ryan. Ryan's come in on the examiner report and apparently is available on the website. So again, you have to go onto the website. That's the only way you're gonna get all this great information I've told you about. You log on and it will be there. The ACCA, don't forget, I don't work for the ACCA. Um, I do a lot of work helping them. I work as a tutor. I also work as a management consultant, helping people on business partnering competencies. So that gives me a lot of insight into making my lectures more interesting. And it's also about the future of accounting, which is the APM exam is, is helping prepare students for. Um, so I'm completely independent and I'm telling you the resources the ACCA have are fantastic. And you should definitely um, you know, get, get on there and make sure you know every resource. It's all been very carefully thought through whether a resource makes it to the ACCA website or not. So thank you, Ryan. 
Um, okay, so there you go, wait, wasn't that good? You asked a question, you didn't know the answer and we've sorted it out in one minute. And that's the benefit of asking questions. And that's the benefit of being here live. So I know some people might be listening to this on recording. Well, okay, uh, welcome and I hope you're well. But because you're listening to it on recording, you don't have that great opportunity to ask your own questions to me live. So try if you can to get on there live. So let's have a look at capabilities that we need. Well, um, what do we need to make sure we're good at? Uh, in terms of uh, using um, strategic planning and control models, um, well, the whole point, you try to keep it holistic and understand that the whole point of APM is to reflect the role of a strategic management accounting. Yep. And, um, you know, we, we as a strategic management accountant understand that there is a broader church of influences um, and there's other risks uh, that are going to affect a situation. Yeah. So, um, of course, we, we need to understand the models to monitor um, organizational performance, but we need to take a much more holistic view, um, you know, maybe of internal and external factors uh, when we're giving advice on performance measurement. Yeah. Um, and also a good candidate will be able to synthesize or connect different points together uh, to give an overall strategic view. In terms of looking at the impact of risk, well, um, you know, we need to consider them when we're making decisions and we need to say, well, we could do that, but that would be quite risky. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's uh, another focus that in the real life we'd have to be aware of. In terms of evaluating design features of performance management uh, systems, um, you know, you're not going to have to have detailed knowledge of hardware and software, but you'd have an overview of the kind of things that business use um, and the trends that are happening in how performance uh, information is provided. And again, if you were reading those two articles, I said, have a look at, you'll get that um, information. Yeah. Um, so, the, you know, big data, uh, those articles I mentioned, that will give you enough information to understand about what's going on in terms of performance management IT systems. But you don't need to go and learn all the, the detail of it. In terms of your ability to apply appropriate strategic performance measurement techniques, well, you just need to apply them really. Um, and you just need to be aware of them and you need to look at some past questions on them. Then talks about advising clients on strategic business performance valuation. Um, well, you will know that businesses are vulnerable to corporate failure and, you know, you'll need to take that performance measurement information and, you know, turn it into, you know, something that's commercially viable. Okay. So why are people failing? Um, APM. What's the reason people are failing? Um, well, let's have a talk about it. Um, in terms of why people fail APM, I think the most important thing that you need to do is to read my articles on a study approach in the student accounting magazine. Okay, so you may be aware, well, first of all, uh, and uh, you know, don't worry if you haven't done that, but all of us should have the student accounting app on our phone or on our tablet. And if you haven't got that, you need to make sure you have it. it gives you lots of great information on what's happening in the exam. And it's really important so that you are aware of everything that's going on. Yeah, and in that student accounting magazine, I have uh, created a list, of, a, a sequence, I think, of about six articles, six or seven articles, talking about how to prepare for the exam, helping you, and I'll talk about some of these things um, to you. So, yeah, just um, where can I get, uh, so uh, he's just wanting to the recordings, as would have been informed in all of the joining instructions, all the webinar recording will be sent after the conference via an email link. So again, that information it will all be provided to you uh, as promised in the um, joining instructions. 
but going back, what do we need to do to prepare so we don't fail? Lots and lots of information. I'm going to touch on it a little bit today, but obviously I've written six long articles that I've spent you know, many hours researching and backing up, and you need to have a look at those. So really important to have a look. Um, and uh, first of all, make sure you've got student accountant, and then we're going to have a look at what, what these articles talk about. And, and the first thing um, in these articles that we talk about is using the power of visualization to motivate yourself. Now, this is something that students don't often do. It is certainly not something that um, people do uh, or, or tutors do. And I think it's really important. And, and I would ask you to ask yourself, why are you taking the exam? What are you doing these ACC exams for? Have you thought about it? Because you, I mean, I ask people this question and say, oh, I want to be a professional person. Okay, but I would need something a bit more powerful to motivate me, to get me out of bed. What is it that this exam is going to bring to your life? And once you've got that clear in your brain, you will be able to motivate yourself towards getting up and studying and organizing yourself and prioritizing study over other things. So really think about that. I mean, it depends what it is. Is, is it... I don't know, is it going to bring a better life to your family? Okay, how, what does that better life look like? You know, what, what are you going to go? Someone said they want to go and qualify and travel. So I says, where are you going to travel? She says, oh, I'd like to go to Paris or France. I says, okay, well, you know, get a picture of the Eiffel Tower, put it on your wall. That's where you're going to go if you pass this exam. And you have to put in a few sacrifices so that that happens, but it's not a big deal. Uh, it's achievable. And once you've sorted that out, um, then you'll be fine. Okay, so that article goes in a lot of detail of that. Maybe, maybe you, want, uh, you want to make money. Not a lot of people do accounting because it's quite a well-paid job. What are you going to do with the money? Some people say, oh, I'm, I'm going to buy a car. And I say, well, what kind of car? What color? Go to the car dealership, sit in the car, feel it, smell it, get the brochure, put a picture on the wall. Yeah. All of those things are really important if you are going to put in the time that is required so you pass this exam without much effort. Okay, that's just one of the articles. There are six other articles. There's another article about how to plan your life um, in a much more effective way. Yep, and uh, how we, when setting goals and, and motivating ourselves, we don't want to use too much willpower uh, we, all, we all have limited amounts of willpower in our tank. And once we use up that willpower, it's very hard to uh, actually force ourselves to do things. So the way we get around that is we make studying a habit. We create environments which we go to. So when we start studying, our brain knows this is time to study. And, you know, I think this is as equal, if not more important than just reading the book. Yeah. So it's all about getting study fit. Okay. Um, you know, different people have different times of day when they're most productive. You might be a morning person. You might be uh, someone who works best with food or someone that works best with no food. Um, but you need to try and identify when you are at your most productive. Yeah. And then maybe start scheduling your study to happen at that time. Yeah. And also when you're least productive, you need to avoid studying at those times. You will know we're all a little bit different, but you should be starting to reflect on that to give you the maximum chance. It's all about maximizing your uh, opportunities. So really important on the study fit thing. So I would ask you to ask yourself, well, first of all, some of us have jobs. So, you know, when do you have to work? That obviously has to get blanked out in the diary. You then have to think, well, you know, when, when are you going to study? You will have identified that there's a sweet spot in your day where you are super absorbent to knowledge. Is that in the evening, with food, without food? Is it first thing in the morning? Some people get up really early in the morning and just do it and then forget about it. As well as being brain fit, I think it's quite important to be body fit to be getting endorphins buzzing around our body. Studying creates stress. Stress creates chemicals um, which are 
not that great for us, if I'm honest. And exercise creates something, it, it creates cortisol. So stress creates cortisol. Exercise creates endorphins. And endorphins are an important uh, kind of counter uh, chemical to the stress chemicals uh, that are created by cortisol. So important to exercise to get some air in your lungs. It's all about having a rounded existence. You cannot study all the time because your brain switches off. And then another important thing to have in your study timetable is some consideration as to when you relax. Yeah, your brain needs to recharge. If you don't have time in the diary to make it recharge, the effectiveness of future study sessions is not going to be that great. So, you know, this is, a, you know, a set of things I'm going to talk to you that's really, really important. Um, it, it's a big thing in sport. If you look at sports people, yeah, they spend 50% of their time practicing corners or free kicks or whatever the sport is. That's important. And that's like you understanding all the technical stuff. But they probably spend 50% of their training on the mental health. And that's something that a lot of students I come across don't spend any time on at all. And that can be a key determinant of success or failure in your exam. So really important. So what would I be uh, recommending you to create? Basically, you're going to create a plan. Okay. And in that plan, what are you going to do? Well, the first thing you're going to do in that plan is you're going to prioritize your tasks. Yep. So you need to figure out what are the most important things you are going to do. Yep. So a good way to prioritize tasks is there's something called the IV Lee method. You can have a look at that I V Y L E E. And that talks about um, basically prepare a list at the end of each day and write down a list of six tasks that you want to com complete tomorrow ranked in order of importance. Yeah. The other thing to help you, if you have not already become familiar with it, is the ACCA Study Planner. Have you looked at the ACCA Study Planner? Another great resource that you might not be aware of. It's fantastic. So that will help you prioritize your tasks. So that's important. And as I said to you before, different people have different times of the day when they're most productive. So are you a morning, evening? You know, or do you like food when you're studying or no food? Do you like to be hungry? Um, but, you know, you need to schedule it. It needs to be in the diary. Uh, short sessions, they're going to help prevent you procrastinate and, um, you know, help you avoid times when you are least productive. So that's really important. Um, and I think, as I said to you before, uh, willpower, uh, we have limited willpower resources in our tank. And the best way to avoid relying on willpower to get us to do things is we, because we've got a plan, we create a routine for ourselves. And if you establish a routine, what that does for your brain, and this is not just me saying, this is based on neuroscience and psychology and routines um, are really a great way to stop you procrastinating and putting things off because what routines start to create is they create a habit. Yeah. And make sure that this routine uh, acknowledges when you're most productive. And um, the routine also says when you relax, when you go to sleep. Yeah. So, and, and it just all becomes a habit. So you get up, you go to bed at a certain time. It sounds a bit patronizing to say this, but this is what top level professional athletes do and their training, their relaxation, their nutrition, it's all actually planned out. But that then helps it all to be achieved. If you're relying on willpower to get you to do things, uh, it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's just we don't, it's not a strong enough motivator willpower. We need to have little shortcuts to help us do things. And one of the best shortcuts is creation of a habit. Yeah, so get yourself a routine. Um, Find out when your sweet spot happens, when you're in a state of flow. Yeah, so um, a flow state is when you're completely in the zone. Yeah, and that's when you're going to be most productive. So you will know that. Um, if you're in such a state, you're not going to procrastinate. 
procrastination is probably the worst enemy of a student. Yeah. So what, what makes us get into that state of flow? Is it the time of day? Is it the, um, the, the place we do it? Is it some food? Is it some background music? Only you know, but you need to look at it. So that we do things, we also need to set deadlines because what a deadline does, a deadline makes you commit. Yep. And that's a really good motivator and it stops you putting things off. Um, however, don't create crazy deadlines for yourself. Yep. Create deadlines which are realistic, which you can achieve. Yep. Uh, they also should be quite specific. So you're probably familiar with smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time bound. Um, so the deadline has to happen at a certain time of day. Yeah. And that's going to, you know, make you plan your life so you don't leave everything till the last minute. It's very hard. I, I, if I'm honest, at the earlier exams, maybe you can cram it because it's all about acquisition of technical information. This is a strategic professional level. It's not really possible to cram and learn because it's about application of knowledge. You don't need to be amazing at all the technical stuff, but you need to understand what it does and when it's relevant and when it's not relevant. Um, also, you might be feeling a bit overwhelmed by all your targets. So break your little targets into manageable chunks. Yep. And that's going to aid productivity as well. Yep. So, um, yeah, really important uh, to think about deadlines, think about planning, think about making sure uh, you're on the right track. Yeah. And, and you know exactly what you're doing. Most Olympic athletes will know where they're going to be. Well, they unfortunately have had their schedule messed up a bit this year because of the uh, pandemic, but they would have known three years before the Olympic final that they were going to be in Tokyo this July. Now they've had to adjust things so they know they're going to be in Tokyo next July. But I would imagine every day of their lives between now and July 2021 will be in a diary and will be clear. Yeah, and that's kind of the same approach I want you to take for your exams because it might seem a bit, well, you, you want to do this exam and why do you want to do this exam? Because it's going to get you something in your life. We've established that. We're now motivated. In order for us to achieve those objectives, we need to organize our lives so it happens. Deadlines is a great thing. The other good thing is help yourself with some time management techniques. Yep, uh, they can keep you focused once you've started. Uh, there's something called a Pomodoro technique. It's P-O-M-D-O-R-O. -O. And um, that kind of, I think it breaks your day into, uh, well, it starts off with probably 20, 25 minutes. That's all you start off with. Um, and you take a short break, five minutes before starting again. And then I think you do four cycles and then you take a longer break, maybe 30 minutes. But it's an app you can get on your phone for free. Pomodoro. But it, as we get better, we might be able to work from 25 to 30 minutes. Really, you know, practiced people who have trained their brain, they can maybe go up to 40 minutes. But if you've never done this before, I would think you're not going to be productive for more than 20, 25 minutes. But we can train our brain to become better. Yeah. So these are very useful shortcuts that just help us become more effective in our study approach and free up time to do other things. Um, you know, the short bursts prevent your mind wandering and prevent you procrastinating. As part of your study approach, also think about rewarding yourself. Yep. Um, you know, give yourself short term rewards. Yeah. That's a much more, it's much better for your brain when you've got a short term reward. Um, you know, if you finish the next two questions, you can have a piece of chocolate. Yeah. Um, the other thing people do, and this works in, you know, people who are drug addicts and alcoholics, they create chains. Yeah. And when we create, so that means, um, you know, you set a target. So one, one terrible thing that affects students is social media. So maybe you say 
for the next four weeks, if you're doing the exam in September, you, you don't go on social media and you let everyone know I'm not on social media. And you put a cross in the It's now three days since I've been on social media. It's now four days. It's now 12 days. And you've given up 12 days. And the process of creating a chain is, um, is a really, people become motivated of not breaking the chain. Yep. Um, and also, I think in your plan, you should commit to maybe you can do one one day, which is a zero day. And then, uh, you know, that's going to help. Yeah. So that's a reward for not going on it for six days. Uh, good motivational driver. So this is, you know, I'm not just saying this. This is all linked to uh, psychologists and their research, neuroscientists who do MRI scans of people's brains and understand how they work. So, yeah, I think it's, um, I did a chat in Malaysia, I think last year, and I, I think, you know, I've got lots of feedback saying, oh, you know, thanks very much. I've not really thought about this side of studying. I've just spent all my time reading a book, but in order that you're motivated and effective in reading a book, you need to get the game plan correct. And you need to get the mental belief in your head telling you the right messages. Uh, so yeah, really important. Other things to consider, what gets you, you know, kind of moving? Uh, often if we're tired, we procrastinate. Yeah, so it's really important to consider how much sleep we're getting. If you're studying all night long, your brain is not in a fit state to basically be effective in study. Yep, hydration is another important thing to keep our energy levels up. Yeah, so think about the food you eat. Uh, think about things that avoid you being lethargic. Um, and also, I think it's a really good idea to get your body moving. Um, and, um, you know, if you can do some vigorous exercise, it's going to flush out those stressful chemicals, the cortisol from your system, and it's going to flood your system with endorphins. And they're the happy chemicals which are going to make you feel better. Even playing energizing music or something like that could help you. Yeah. Uh, what else would I say in helping you become a more effective student? Well, the other little trick is your work environment. Yeah, it's really important we're not distracted and it's easy to focus. We need to help ourselves. So get rid of clutter. Yeah, only have things on the desk which are relevant to the study session. Um, turn off social media. I would recommend get rid of it because a ping goes on your phone. Oh, what was that ping? Yeah, it's just, and also when you leave that state of flow, because you go off and look at an email message, it's not just two minutes looking at an email. The concentration flow is broken and the ability to get back into that flow takes a lot longer than two minutes. So it's a really ineffective way of, um, managing your life. I would suggest, you know, if you do want to look at emails, you know, you look at them between maybe eight and eight 30, and then you look at them maybe between six and six 30 and that's it. You don't look at them at any other time. And, um, yeah, you want to pass your exam or Hey, look at them all the time, but be prepared that you're not going to pass your exam. And, but, well, that's up to you. It's your decision. You're the person that chooses whether you want success or not and if you do want success these are the tips that are going to facilitate it happening just one and then we'll have a little chat about what i've said we also need to think about um, our exercise and diet and uh, we need to be careful if we're tired that makes us procrastinate yep so it's really important to think about what we're putting what fuel are we putting into our tank yep uh, hydration is really important because it keeps our brain kind of well hydrated. I think it, the brain's 80% water. So if you're dehydrated, you know, it's going to affect your brain. Um, make sure that you um, don't take food, which, you know, a lot of like white starchy flowery foods, our body can't take those and they convert them straight to glycogen and that makes us sleepy. Yeah. So you want to try and avoid that if you can. Um, low release carbs, complicated carbs, complex carbs, release into our blood flow more slowly and tend to make us less sleepy. But you will know, also think about brain nourishing foods. You can look all of this up. 
but um, yeah, you, 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 there's lots of studies in schools, how schools and what they give to children at lunch can affect their concentration in the afternoon. So lots and lots of advice there. Uh, I'm going to, you know, talk about to talk about a few more things on that. But does anyone have anything to say, you know, on that area? Any questions, any queries, any disagreements? I'm more than happy for you to disagree. Um, and, you know, I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm giving up my holiday to chat to you because I want you to pass the exam. Yeah. I'm not just, oh, here's another webinar. I genuinely care about your success. And this is what I have learned over 25 years to help not just students, but in other walks of life, people to become successful. And the first thing is, why do you want to do this? Once you've established clarity on why you want to do this, we then need to have a plan of how we're going to do it. So what, what do we, you know, do we have any, anything, our live attendees, any questions uh, you would like to ask me uh, on anything at all, really? I'll, I'll just give you a moment or two. Uh, Jin agrees with me. Good. We'll do something about it, Jin. Do you, does anyone do anything about it and can share their success as a result? None for now. Okay. Thank you. Oh, um, uh, Kai said, what is the key for success? Well, uh, what I've just said, really, in terms of making sure your brain is in the right place, Kai. Um, but the other thing is not regurgitating loads of technical fact. It's the broader holistic knowledge of the technical areas and appreciating their appropriateness in application of them in a strategic context. Yeah, so it's not just regurgitate everything you know about activity-based management. Yeah, it's about whether that particular technique is truly appropriate in the context of the scenario you're given. So you have to have a broader understanding. And to have a broader understanding, you've got to try to think about APM in the context of real life. What's happening in real life and what's going on? That's, that's, that's really important. Okay. Um, so Jin feels able to concentrate more in their studies after doing some exercise. You know, that's, it's scientifically proven, Jin, but it's very good of you to just confirm you feel that way as well. So thank you for that. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, you know, the, the, the idea of this session is to provide you with some information that I prepared for you. And it's also a two way conversation to enable you to ask questions. I have set quite a bit of time aside for questions, but um, it's up to you. Um, I'm, I'm here for you. If you've got questions, I'm here to answer them, but we're not going to force you to answer questions which you don't have. Maybe it's all being clear. So let's talk about then if we have no more questions. Um, let me check. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about when we're going to do these things, when we're going to implement these ideas. Yep. So, you know, the whole point of this webinar is, is only any use if you embrace some of the techniques I've just talked about. Yeah. So, um, you know, I would ask you to start today. Yeah. Um, I would maybe share your targets with some friends. When we publish our targets, we're more likely to commit to them. Yeah. We're not going to overwhelm ourselves saying we've got to read two chapters every day. We're going to break our approach into more manageable chunks. Yeah. To help us do that, we might be using the ACCA study planner. Um, or we might be creating our own timetable. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're going to fit them into a realistic study plan. Yeah. Which we can um, 
chief, we're also going to assist our brain with the use of apps like Pomodoro. Yeah. And what they're going to do for you is just help your time management. Not only are you going to look after your time management, but you're going to look after your mental health management so that you can keep doing this day after day after day after day. And there are many apps. One that's quite good is something called Headspace. Yeah, and Headspace, well, I think it's part of uh, Spotify, certainly as you get it free with Spotify um, in, in the UK. So, so have a think about mindfulness. Uh, maybe just take a few moments with a mindfulness app to get your brain slowed down. There's the, I've seen one where you can put this, it measures your brain waves and you can put it on your head and it measures what your brain waves are doing. And the more calm they are, the more birds you can hear through the headset. If you're stressed, you don't hear any birds and you've got to learn how to calm your brain down. And if you can do that, it's very useful. Yep. Uh, you, you know, it's a bit like stretching after exercise. It's important after a lot of mental exercise, we calm our brain down so they can relax and it can replenish and refuel. Um, so yeah, they're, they're really important. And also we are going to probably have in our plan, uh, a plan for diet and exercise. Yeah. So that might not be something that people have told you in a lot of detail about before, but I would suggest they are key things and key determinants of success and failure, not just in your exam, I would say in life in general. If you look at the people who write a lot of, you know, successful management books for strategic leaders, people like Stephen Covey, um, Clayton Christensen, and all those kind of people, Tony Robbins even, they all talk about this. They all talk the same, really. I mean, all they do is do what I've done and just learn lessons from uh, neuroscientists, learn lessons from psychology, and apply them in the context of the task they have. And your task is all about being successful in your exam. Okay. Other thing um, that's going to help you is other resources other than just the APM resources. Well, you should appreciate um, the ACCA's Code of Ethics and Conduct. We do need to understand in performance management a little bit about ethics and uh, a little bit about the modern way uh, a business has to behave. Um, if we want to know more about all of the IT applications and the data applications, have a look at the Accounting and Business Magazine. It's free. It's part of your subscription, yeah? And there's lots of interesting articles in there which help you understand more around the subject, yeah? Um, what else do we need to be appreciative of? Well, have a look at the Professional Insights, which again is all free, yeah? And in the Professional Insights, you've got all kinds of brilliant um, uh, resources about talking about technology, about risk. And again, if you don't like reading magazines, um, you can look at them as an app. Okay, so really important. So, you know, there's an article on blockchain, there's an article on the accountant of the future. These are things that industry are really interested in you having awareness of. They're not that interested in, you know, you being able to work out some technical, you know, equation because in, in real life, there's a, the, well, I've got a computer to do that. I don't need a human brain to do it. I need a human brain to interpret and consider and evaluate the technical information. But the skill of them doing it is not something that I really need because software does that. Yeah. So uh, we need to be able to communicate the information correctly. We need to be able to contextualize the information correctly. We need to know about the threats. You might, during lockdown, you may be familiar with all of the cybersecurity issues that have been taking place because lots of people now have meetings like I'm chatting to you here today, which is via Zoom. But the consequence of meetings via Zoom, I think Zoom is a little bit easier to hack into than maybe hacking into a corporate IT system. 
And the result of that is uh, sometimes the passwords people use on Zoom are the same as what they use for their corporate system. So that allows hackers easier access into corporate systems. And there's been lots of cyber ransoms going on, like huge amounts. But again, you'd know all of that if you were aware of what's going on in the broader business world, because that awareness enables you to give perspective and context to your arguments. If you just read the textbook, well, okay, yes, you know the technical stuff, it is important, but you need to know more than that. You need to be able to um, contextualize it a little bit. Okay, really important that we do all of that. What else would I say to you? Well, I think just to, to summarize the other things, I think, have you got a prize? Do you know what is at the end of this hard work? Have you thought about it? Yeah, I hope you have. I hope you have. Because um, it's really important. So in terms of what we've talked about, We've talked about what advanced performance management is, if you've never taken it before. And advanced performance management, yes, it builds on management accounting and performance management, but it has much bigger scenarios. It requires you to apply the knowledge much more than just do some sums and appreciate risk factors and how it connects to the overall business. If you're not aware, I've told you about the resources, please don't use non-official ACCA resources. You're just wasting your time. And time is precious, as we've said. I mean, it's pointless doing all this timetabling and managing our lives if we're then gonna be looking at resources which aren't official, because they're, they're probably gonna include information that's no longer relevant. Yeah, if they were good, the ACCA would approve them. Just, if they're no good, the ACCA doesn't approve them. We appreciate the exam format. I have had some questions coming through and I will answer them in a moment, but the exam format is about time management. It's about focus on the marks. It's about layout. I'm going to talk about that in a lot of detail in the next exam. Um, what capabilities do we need? Well, we've summarized those and maybe you might want to play back this video so you understand them. And then I think the fifth point I spent a bit of time on, and there's even more information provided on this on the uh, student accountant uh, set of articles I've written, you know, what we need to do to maybe help you. I'm more than happy. If you, uh, I've got a, a web address there, seanpurcell.co.uk. Just maybe if you are taking exams in December and it, uh, sorry, September, it doesn't matter what exam you're taking. I just to help, I, I, I'm, I'm very aware that during lockdown, students mm, may be lacking a little direction and motivation. So I think I might, you know, try to create some kind of mail chimp, a little mail in your mailbox. Have you done this? Have you done that? Just to keep you focused, just to give you a little bit of a, a kind of coaching uh, every few days in, in the countdown to the exam. So probably in the last few weeks before the exam, I'll, I will, if you've signed up for it on that email address, seanpurcell.co.uk. No, no, it's all free. I'm not, you know, it's free and I'll send it to you. And uh, yeah, if it doesn't help, just unsubscribe. But um, if it does, um, I'm more than happy to do that for you. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, but let me just go back to a few questions that came through that I had whilst I was talking. Um, Kai says, most of the answers are embedded in the questions, right? Uh, no, Kai, no. Uh, it's a scenario from which you would be able to connect the information and know, well, actually, from my understanding of performance management, the things going on here are lacking a awareness of risk or they're, they're just too wooden or they're inappropriate in a fast moving dynamic business. They're more appropriate for a more static business. So it's not a comprehension, um, but you need to, yes, the information will be given, the answers aren't given, the information which you need to what the ACCA would describe as synthesize and connect, they're going to be embedded. But it's not kind of all of the clues are, I mean, you have to work out that, that that is relevant or not relevant, and you're able to prioritize that. And that comes with practice, Kai. So, you know, it's no good just reading the answers. You need to practice doing questions and writing answers where you'll appreciate that. Mm, yeah. Okay. 
Target set should be small. I agree, Jin. Yes, that's correct. Roughly how much in weight percentage of calculations? Uh, well, I would say no more than f maximum 50. It's, I mean, there's no like hard and fast rule, but, it, but it's more, I would say it's more words than it's numbers. Yeah, it's more words than it's numbers. There will be some numbers. So you can't avoid the numbers, but it's about the understanding and application of the numbers. You have proven that you can do these numbers at the PM level. At the APM level, you need to apply these numbers. And that's why um, when someone says, what's the main reason for failure? Well, I think the main reason for failure is people's lack of application of the numbers. Yeah, so that's, that's important. Um, uh, why, what should revision focus be? Well, I, I think you need to know, understand, you can't say, oh, I want you to look at this topic and this topic, they're the tips. It doesn't work at strategic professional level. You need to have a good overview of all the areas and um, you, you need to be able to understand how um, it could affect the dynamics of this particular scenario, but wouldn't be relevant in another scenario. And I think it's important to make sure when you are doing plastic questions, you're looking at examiner reports that's important and uh, very true, uh, Kai, it is about application of theory. So is it more about application? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thiru, it's a pleasure explaining it. Um, may I know what if I write definition for some terms in the answer, but the question didn't ask to define? Well, it's up to you. There's no negative marking, but what, what if you gave... Um, so I'm in the workplace because you're a strategic professional. I'm in the workplace and it says, can you just give me an evaluation? Well, before I talk about an evaluation, I want to tell you about activity-based costing. Activity-based costing has a number of ways in which we can do it. Activity-based costing uses cost drivers, blah, 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 blah. What do you think your boss would say if you said that to them? I don't think they would be that impressed. That's not how we talk in the workplace. As a student of advanced performance management, we are behaving as a strategic professional. Yeah. So of course we know the technical stuff and the markers by understanding how we've worded our answer will appreciate that, but we don't need to regurgitate it all and give all the, the definitions. Yeah. So it might be, you know, you don't want to be, you know, talking about the strategic planning model was this theory, this period, and this period, and these are blah, blah, blah. You just need to use the models to help evaluate the situation. If you've done SPL, it's exactly the same approach, quite similar relationships between APM and SPL. So it's not about regurgitation of fact and, and terms and definitions. I mean, that, that, that you have to wonder, I'll talk in the next session about something called Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy is a way in which exam questions are set. And the Bloom's taxonomy of all strategic professional papers is at a level three. Yeah, so it's not regurgitation of fact. You did that at earlier papers. Um, Likshan says, how do we elaborate the points to get maximum marks? I think you have to appreciate a little bit around the subject. So if you become familiar with what's been discussed in some of those professional insights articles in, in a fairly you know, relaxed way, that's going to help you elaborate around the points. So please try to get away from just learning a load of technical facts. That's relevant to PM more than APM. It's about contextualizing the technical facts in the context of a scenario. And if you've read about this happening in different businesses, your ability to contextualize is, is much easier done. Um, in terms of Hadi Jatu, are uh, December exams going to be in CBE? Uh, I think if you were here right at the beginning, Hadi Jatu, um, Esther explained this in detail. So if you've just arrived at the beginning of the video, Esther had a lovely slide explaining which exams were going to be CBE in Brunei. Uh, Joanne, thank you. Joanne's explained it super quick. So thank you, uh, Joanne. Uh, so you don't need to go back to the beginning of the video. It's uh, they're launching. Uh, September 21. 
any other things you want to say? Anything that maybe I've said that maybe Joanne or Esther or, or you know, anyone else wants to comment on? I'm more than happy to take those on board. But, but I think the key thing and the key reason people don't do well is they think it's, they get over obsessed with the technical stuff, over obsessed with the technical stuff. Is it okay if I have APM first before I have SPL? It's up to you. I think the answer to that, Jim, would be, have you done the EPSM model? Because if you haven't, you have to do that before APM and SPL. Yeah, it's going to make your life much easier. Don't forget, I'm here to make your life easier. And so you must do EPSM. It's a, it's a self-managed learning program, take you 15 to 18 hours. And it really helps in getting your brain in the right place for, for APM and SPL. Uh, no problem. Uh, pleasure. Thank you for your need to leave for a conference call. No problem. Uh, what you miss would be uh, available on a recording. And if you can, and you are taking the exam, have a look at what I'm going to say on revision. So thank you. Kai, when we attempt the question, we need to bear in mind to relate links to mission goal. Well, you need to contextualize it. It depends on what the key critical success factors are. And it, it might be, yes, they're not financial. They might be socially responsible or something like that. So maybe the KPIs are too financial focused and not qualitative and too quantitative. Yeah, that's what we need, exactly. Anything, anything else you want to chuck in? Uh, Fatin, can we use subheadings? Uh, not oh, can we use them? You must use them. Don't forget, and I'll talk more about this next time. It's about communicating to the marker. You've got to help the marker. The marker doesn't have long to mark, and you need to help them to mark. So you need to create a really well structured answer that helps them. And if you were, you know, bringing some numbers, we're not doing. If we were doing, if anyone's doing a CBE, you know, you would make sure that I, you can do the calculations in the spreadsheet section but I would always be highlighting them in my word processing section. But you know, if you're doing a written paper, it's really important to link them together. So subheading is really important. For, for the closing later, you can pass the stage. Uh, oh, sorry, that's Ryan telling me. Okay, so all I wanna to say to you gang, and then we're gonna bring uh, Joanne in. I just wanna say good luck. Yeah, just wanna say good luck. But really, if you follow what I've said, if you get your brain in the right place, we don't need good luck. Uh, we don't need good luck. And um, Joanne's going to come in and just summarize uh, a couple of things um, from the ATCA's perspective that you also need to be aware of. So happy to send you um, a kind of little motivational every two or three days. But um, just to save me time, I can't send an email to everyone. I'll put it on the kind of mailing list that will go out. So if you're on there, you'll get it. If not, all the very best of luck and listen to my advice, please. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Sean. Thank you, everyone. And especially to you, Sean. Um, we appreciate you being here despite you're on, a ho on your holiday. So just a quick uh -huh. announcement. We have a range and exam focus enrichment sessions next week for paper APM, SPL, SBR, and PM. And on top of that, there will be uh, sessions on how to prepare for your CBE remote exams for paper SBL and SBR. So to join the sessions, please check your email for the webinar links. Now, um, everyone who registered for this webinar, will be getting an email from us with details of how you can listen to it again together with the presentation slide. Now, it looks like we have covered everything early today. So we will give you back 10 minutes of your time. So happy Friday, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. Goodbye. We will see you next week. See you, everybody. Yes. Bye.